this video, we are showing you the Merklin 60883 feedback decoder. We will show you how to connect it to the central station, and we will also show you how to set up an initial program, an initial automation in the central station with it. You can connect many feedback decoders to the central station. The current number for the feedback decoders, also referred to as S88, is the 60881. Now you may have older feedback modules, they were numbered 6088 and 60880. They all can be connected to the central station, but the only way to connect them is through this S88 link. So the first module to buy and the first module to use is this one, the 60883 S88 link. There are 16 screw-in terminals for your inputs. There are two RJ jacks for your new 608081 feedback decoders. And you see the white input for your older flat cable S88 modules. And then a power input here on the side and you can hook up your 66365 transformer to it. It is time to connect the link S88 to the central station. We have the black cable with the round plug that plugs into the booster output of the central station and we have the 66365 transformer. You have to make sure that you are using the 66365 which is approved for use in the US and it will be marked 120 volts AC and 60 Hertz. If you're in different countries with different power requirements it could be that you need a different transformer. The jack plug simply plugs into the side and this provides power to the S88 link. The S88 has the advanced feature that you can change the operating voltage. It normally operates at 12 volts but you can set it to 5 volts. Only users who still have old modules may have to change the voltage. We do not have to mess with it. If you look at the round plug, it has a flat bottom and that flat bottom plugs into the port that is marked 6017X. It's where normally your booster plugs in. And you can see the bottom, the flat bottom goes to the bottom and that's how you plug this in. If you have a booster connected to the 6017X port, then you can buy a Merklin 60125 terminal. Plug that into the central station and then you can plug the link S88 into it. We start up our central station, hit the setup, and then hit the wrench on the left bottom of the screen. We want to make sure that we're on the information page. You can see information is marked here. If you're on another page, simply find the information and select it. Go to the drop down box on the top and the link S88 has already announced itself to the central station. You can select it and the number that you see behind the S88 may be or will be different uh, in your application. All the settings here are in German but they are already set the way that you need them set. You will make changes to these if you start to connect more S88 feedback modules to your link S88. So we're happy with all the settings and we can hit the upload button, the blue arrow that points down. In this case, we did not make any changes to the screen, so we could also hit the green check mark. On the same setup page in the configuration screen, we can scroll sideways to find devices. I'll click on it and now you can see the link SE88 has a device ID of 122 and we can edit it if we want to and give it a name. It's not necessary but I'll show it here so that you know how to do this. And of course I think a good name for this video would be AJC Kids. You name it AJC Kids, hit the check mark and now the nickname for this link S88 is AJC Kids. And I'll hit the upload button again. As you can see, 
this space also allows you to remove the device. Now we hit the check mark and we get back out of the configuration screen. Now we change our tabs. We could go to keyboard. Do you remember that MFX signal that we programmed in another video? Well, we're going to automate its operation. For this, we click on the memory tab and go to the memory page. This is a really cool page. We hit the wrench. And you see all these buttons. And when we specify a button, I use A3 in this case, you can program into the central station what actions need to be executed when you push that button. The name A3 doesn't tell us much of what this memory button does, so it is best to give it a name that will somewhat remind you of what the function is doing. In our example, we will have a train on track one standing by the red signal with another train approaching on the same track. That approaching train needs to set the signal to green, so I will just call it approaching track one. Next, we specify the position where you're going to connect the contact track to, and it's going to be position number one, which is right there on the S88 link. Working along along the bottom, we'll go to EXT, which is the advanced settings. You can see it's already set for module one, contact one. And now we need to change from the central station to 122. Remember, the S88 link is named 122. Now we need to specify what needs to be done. And that's what you will see in that window on the right. I wanted to set the signal to green, so I go back to keyboard and then select set the signal to green. And you can see it popped up on the right hand screen. If that's not what you want, hit the trash can. And you could, for example, select, I want to set the signal to red. But since we want to set it to green, put this in a trash can, select green for the signal. And you could also select other functions. They're non installed right now, but I could select that function and maybe that function. And so the central station can do a whole sequence of events, a whole sequence of functions. But in this example, we're just going to set the signal to green. So that's where I will leave it. So now it says approach track one. I like it all and I'll hit the upload button. Go back to the memory tab. See if it's uploaded. Yep. And I'll hit the check mark. And now we're done with setting the memory under A3. I'll hit the wrench button again because now I want to program the second function. I'll put it under A4 and it is to set the signal to red. So I'll give it again a logical name and I guess I will call it leaving track one. Like it, hit the check mark. I'll have to set the contact and I'll use number four for this video. So change it to three, four. So it's module number one, contact number four. I'll hit the advanced button. And again, I'll have to change from master central station to 122. Hit the check mark. And now I need to assign a function. So I go back to keyboard and I select set the signal to unsafe. Shows up in the right bar. Go back to memory. I like it all. So I hit the blue upload button and the green check mark to get out of the blue configuration screen. When I hit approach track one, the signal goes to green. When I hit leave track one, the signal goes to red. You can see that I switched the icon to the right of the buttons from a hand to a hand and a locomotive. You're now allowing these functions to not just be controlled with your hands, but also with a locomotive through an S88 link. In this video, I'm simulating a contact track with a simple yellow wire connected to the ground on the corner. 
This can simulate a locomotive running over a contact track. So I ground the wire on the corner post, and if I go to number four, which is unsafe, nothing happens. If I hit number one, you can see the signal goes to green. And if I hit number four, it goes back to red. You can also see that the central station's memory screen switches right along with it. Congratulations, you have now successfully hooked up your S88 link to your central station and programmed it. Remember to visit us online at www.ajckids.com.